Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Don't you like to stand up and praise the Lord? Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, we must have met after a long, maybe two weeks. Last week we all didn't meet each other. Amen. Amen. So let's greet each other and say, Praise the Lord. Jesus loves you. Our God is good. So we are here with, with Psalms 149, verse 3 and 5. Let them praise Him with dancing and making melody to Him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes delight in His people. He crowns the humble with the victory. Amen. Let His faithful people rejoice this honor and sing for joy on the crouches. So there is nobody as good as our God. Amen. Our God is good. Our God is great. Amen. Our God is the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Amen. Only one true living God. So let's sing and dance. Don't think about who is looking at me because nobody looks at me except Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In Psalms 8, verse 2, it says, O Lord our God, how great is your name throughout the earth and glory in the heavens above. Brothers and sisters, don't you remember the miracle at the wedding feast of Cana where the Lord Jesus turned water into wine? The same Jesus is present now right here next to you. He's looking at you and saying, Praise God. He loves praises and He loves you. You very much. So this same God who changed water into wine is going to change you all over again. Hallelujah. Believe it. There is no one like our God. Our God is so awesome. Our God is so great. Our God is an ever-living God. So let's sing with the wine and dance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
continue worshiping our Lord. Our Lord God is here right now. Let's call on the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Spirit of God, come rain down in our lives, rain down in our hearts. Come and fall upon fresh on us a new anointing. Come and give us a new anointing. Hallelujah. 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 God, Spirit of God, come down into our lives. Come and make us a new. Come and give us fresh anointing. Hallelujah.
if you are finding difficult to come too close to Jesus, just sing this song and you will come closer to Jesus because you are calling his name Jesus. He is the counselor. He is the, he is the most wonderful. He is our almighty. He is all we need. Hallelujah. As we are entering the world, let us ask Jesus to show us today what is the message today in the word of God. It is healing and anointing segment. Hallelujah. Let's all ask for a healing, spiritual law. Healing, especially healing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother and sister, keep your hands on chest and go in here.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, today we are going to have a session of the Word of God. Then we will have a long healing and regular service today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today's topic is mercy and grace. Dear brothers and sisters, when you understand these two topics, the mercy and grace, our understanding of the God's love will be very deeper and wider. Praise the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, mercy is when we are about to be punished. The one who has authority over us to give the punishment Instead of punishing us, if he is leaving us, freeing us, liberating us, that is a call, the mercy. One of the instances and examples of mercy. Justice, justice has to be done. For every evil act or bad act, justice has to be done. But instead of punishing us, if the person who has the authority show mercy on us and leaving us from the punishment, that is an act of mercy. So, we don't deserve mercy, we don't deserve that favor, but that kind of kindness is shown to us by the one who has the authority. The best example is Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin is death. According to the word of God, we all must be punished to death because the word is wages of sin is death. So, instead of punishing us and condemning us to the eternal death in hell, God himself in Christ, he came into the world in the body, in the flesh and he took all our punishment upon himself, the punishment that is due to you and I and he kept, He took all the punishment upon himself and he died on the cross of Calvary instead of you and I being punished in our place, God the innocent Jesus Christ of the Lord took the punishment for us and not only that, he forgave us and delivered us, freed us from the condemnation of the hell. This is called the mercy. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mercy is being punished for what we not mercy is not being punished for what we deserve. But the grace is showing kindness to those who don't deserve it. Put in other words, unmerited favor is called. The grace. Mercy and grace, both of things are coming from the Lord our God. Unmerited favor. We don't deserve that kind of favor, but God is showing that favor upon us. That is the, the grace. So what is grace? Grace is the mercy in action. When you look at the cross of Calvary, we can see the mercy and grace which are part of the God's love is been revealed on the cross of Calvary. So, dear brothers and sisters, the mercy and grace, that the origin of the mercy and grace is the throne of grace or the throne of God on the cross of Calvary. When you look at the Old Testament, where the Israelites were challenged by the enemies from the whole history of the Israel, they are always challenged by the enemies around them, even now. We look at the Old Testament, whenever the people of Israel were threatened by the enemy who are more powerful in army, in strength and in wealth, Israel always switched to one special form of prayer, that is the fasting and prayer. We can see, for example, take the Nineveh, because of the sins of the city of the people of Nineveh, God decided to punish the people of Nineveh and destroy the city of Nineveh. He sent the prophet Jonah to convey the message to the city and Jonah traveled three days east to west and north to south declaring the plan of God. Anyway, he was singing, God is, God is fed up with you. He is going to destroy you. This is the message, the prophetic message revealed by the Lord through the prophet Jonah. So Jonah was expecting the destruction of the Nineveh city and the people of Nineveh. But instead of destruction, something else happened. 
When the people heard the message of the Lord, this city is going to be destroyed because of the sin and because of the lack of repentance and rebellion. And the king and all the people, including the cattle and the children, they, they put on the sackcloth, that's a sign of humility, and they sprinkled the ashes upon them, and they sat on the floor, and crying and weeping, they are they're confessing their sins to the Lord, asking the Lord to show mercy. Put in other words, Lord, give us one more chance. Jonah was expecting the destruction of the city, and Jonah was saved by waiting outside the city to see the destruction. But the people repented and cried and wept, and they were fasting and praying. The, the, then the turning point happened. What instead of destruction, the Lord forgave the city and the people of Nineveh. He did not destroy the city. <coughs> what is happening here? <coughs> prophecy that Jonah was a real prophet, genuine prophet. Prophecy was also revealed by the Lord. And why the Lord changed his mind? The reason is the mercy triumph over judgment. <coughs> The book of James says, mercy, triumph over judgment. People of Nineveh repented and they are seeking the mercy of God. God changed his mind instead of destruction. He saved the people of Nineveh from destruction and the wrath of God, the anger of God. Dear brothers and sisters, there is only one weapon that can prevent the judgment of God. That can prevent the wrath of God. That can prevent the anger of God. That can prevent the destruction that happened in our life is the mercy of God. How can we draw the mercy of God? We need to be humble. We need to be repentant. And we need to be seeking the, the, the help of the Lord. Acknowledging our vulnerability and weaknesses and limitations. A, a, a pride, a heart with the filled with the pride cannot attract the mercy of God. A haughty mind cannot receive the mercy of God. A similarly, a rebellious mind cannot receive the mercy of God. A heart that is contrite and broken in spirit. A heart that is repenting all the time for the misdeeds of their own actions. A heart that is merciful to other people will definitely receive the mercy of God. Remember, mercy triumph over judgment. There was a king in the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 38. The name of the king is Ezekiah. Ezekiah was a nice king. And one day, Ezekiah, Hezekiah, and he fell sick. So all the doctors were called and nobody could treat his illness. Hezekiah is almost on the death bed. Then he came, there came the prophet Isaiah. Prophet Isaiah, as sent by the Lord, he went to the palace of King Ezekiah. Everyone was expecting healing from this powerful prophet. Instead of declaring the, the healing of the Lord, fear of the Lord, prophet Isaiah, filled with the Holy Spirit, he prophesied like this, O King Ezekiah, you are not going to be healed. You are not going to live. You are going to die. Set your house, the palace and order for mourning. Inform the people who are close to you because you are going to die. This is what the Lord God Almighty is telling. King Hezekiah and all the palace officials royal family expected a favor and a healing and a comforting message from the Lord of God. On the other hand, the message was about the destruction, death and mourning. King Hezekiah immediately, he wept and cried. He cried for the mercy of God. Lord, remember my youth days. I walked faithfully in your sight. And he was telling and seeking the mercy of God. Remember a king with his army, with his royal family and the palace, everything in this country is his. At one point, he sees that all these things, the comfort, the <coughs> army, the military power, the wealth, the treasury, everything is useless and meaningless in this situation. He is vulnerable. And then the message of the message that he is going to die that came. 
he wept bitterly and cried. He was crying for the mercy of God. Prophet Isaiah, he prophesied, he went back. After some time, the Lord told Prophet Isaiah to go back to the palace of King Ezekiah. This time, again filled with the Holy Spirit, Prophet Isaiah prophesied. What is the prophecy? Do you know? The prophecy is King Ezekiah, I have seen your repentance. You are not going to die. You are going to live. I am going to be extending your lifespan to 15 more years. Hallelujah. And your enemies, your enemies cannot defeat you. And I am going to give the peace around the borders of your nation. Do you think that, when you look at this instance at the point of Prophet Isaiah, from the Prophet Jonah, the genuine prophets, and the prophecy was revealed by the Lord God Almighty only. They never spoke these particular prophecies. They never spoke from their own flesh and heart. But by the Spirit of God they prophesied. And they were commissioned by the Lord to speak this message to either the people of Nineveh or to the people of the, the King Ezekiah. One prophecy is, King Ezekiah you are going to die. Another prophecy is, People of Job, the delivery you are going to die. The Lord is angry with you. He is going to destroy you. Now the same thing. What happened? King Prophet Isaiah second day when he visited. When he visited the King Ezekiah. This time, O oh King Ezekiah. You are not going to die. You are going to live. The Lord is expanding. Extending the life span to 15 more years. Why this conflict in prophecy? Dear brothers and sisters, something happened in between. Between the first prophecy and the second prophecy. You look at this incident to the point of prophet Isaiah. What error he did it through giving a contrary conflicting prophecy. He did nothing. He was only speaking the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord is contradicting here. What changed the heart of the Lord, the stand of the Lord. It is the cry for mercy. Hallelujah. 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 Therefore the census says this is the only weapon, only form of prayer that can prevent the judgment. That can prevent the landslide. That can prevent the calamities. That is seeking the mercy of God with the humility and humbleness and faithfulness. With a repentant heart. Not with the equal heart but with the repentant heart. I can say many, many examples from the Bible. A God is love. God is full of love. When you seek the God's stir up, kindle the God's love and mercy, the Lord will be stirred up with this mercy His and His compassion. Then the instead of judgment, punishment and destruction, the Lord will have mercy and compassion on us. So, my dear brother and sister, the what is mercy? Mercy is Psalms 103, chapter 103, verses 8 to 10 tells, The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us, nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. There is one one part of the Lord is full of love, full of mercy, full of compassion, slow to anger, abundant in love, and He will not remember Hallelujah. our faults of the past if we repent and ask His mercy. What is the sacrament of confession? In the sacrament of confession, we are kindling, touching the mercy side of our Lord God Almighty. Dear brother and sister, we don't deserve the forgiveness of sin. Nobody on this earth, born in this world, can deserve the forgiveness of sin, the sins that we have committed in the past. Only God can forgive our sins. But a simple act of repentance, a simple act of humility and seeking the mercy of God to forgive our sins, that immediately kindle the Lord's compassion and mercy on us and the covenant of the, the most precious blood will be implemented. All our sins are washed away to the sacrament of reconciliation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is the Lord's mercy. The sacrament of reconciliation is based on the Lord's mercy. Forgiving or not forgiving is His decision. 
but his disciples always forgive the sinner who truly repent and seek his mercy and for forgiveness the lord is faithful to his promise and lord will wash away and forgive all our sins that we repented and confess to the sacrament of reconciliation the mercy of god is revealed manifested in the sacrament of reconciliation dear brothers and sisters ephesians chapter 2 verses 4 and 5 says but god is rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins he gave us life when he raised christ from the dead it is only by god's grace that we have been saved god is rich in mercy whenever we touch the mercy of god and the lord's mercy will come the compassion will flow and the, the leper is a lord of mercy the blind man said lord of mercy on me and my dear brother and sister the mercy of god is so so powerful it can triumph over the judgment it can triumph over the powers of darkness it can triumph over the wrath of god it can prevent the 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 anger of god because the mercy of god is so so powerful how can we get the mercy of god claim the mercy of god in our life 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3 says all praise to God the father of our lord jesus christ it is by his great mercy that we have been born again because god raised jesus christ from the dead now we live with the great expectation it is the mercy of god our sins are forgiven it is purely by the mercy of god we are adopted into the family of god not because of our aristocratic birth or our qualification or talent not because we are living a holy life now how much of a holy life we try to live still we cannot expect meet the standards set by heaven so who is filling that lacking that we have in our life it is christ our lord purely by mercy when you look at the hebrews chapter 12 verse 24 the word of god is telling you have come to the mediator of the new covenant and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of abel so that is speaking you have come to the mediator of the new covenant there are two covenants old covenant where moses is the mediator and there is a law and the new covenant where christ jesus is the mediator and this is speaking about that you have come to the mediator of the new covenant and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of abel when abel was killed by his own brother cain because of jealous and abel's blood fell on the ground and the bible says abel's blood cried out to the lord for for what not for mercy for for revenge of our judgment as right showing mercy or judgment that's god's choice but it it passed for a judgment so abel's blood fell on the ground and he cried out to the lord the lord from heaven heard the the cries of abel's blood and he came down and punished cain dear brothers and sisters how come abel's blood did cry abel is no more but his blood cried out from the ground the word of god says let me know that the life of the creature is the life of the flesh is in its blood accordingly abel's blood was in life was in his blood so when abel was killed the life in the blood cried out to the lord and the lord came down and punished cain for the murder he committed similarly my dear brother and sister innocent one christ jesus died on the cross of calvary and his innocent blood was also shed so why this blood went hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 says the eternal spirit of god offered this blood on the mercy seat of god in heaven who is the eternal spirit of god it is the spirit of god or the holy spirit god did not allow that is sinless blemishless curseless eternal life giving blood to be trampled by people or washed away by the rain 
but the God, the Almighty, he, the, the, but the Holy Spirit, or the eternal Spirit of God, collected this blood, once this blood was shed on the cross, once the sacrifice was over on the cross of Calvary, the eternal Spirit of God collected this blood and offered on the mercy seat of God in heaven. What is the mercy seat of God? The throne of grace. The mercy seat of God Almighty in heaven. There is another replica that was in the Jerusalem temple behind the curtain. That place is called the most holy place. The things in the most holy place is the copy of what was in the heaven. What was in the heaven, what is in the heaven is real. And what was in the Jerusalem temple behind the curtain is a replica and a copy. So year after year, Jewish high priests used to do the offering, the sprinkling of the blood and the rituals according to the law year after year in the copy of what was existing in heaven. But this is not the real what is on the earth, but the real one is on the, in the heaven. So <clears throat> Jewish high priests used to sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat, throne of grace, which was, the, which was in the Ark of the Covenant. So I don't want to go into detail. The Caribbean angels were there. Ark of the Covenant was there. Aaron's rod was there. That was a different session. If God permits, we'll see some other day. But the real one is in heaven. When the Jesus Christ, the Son of God, when he offered his blemishless, sinless, curseless, eternal life-giving blood as a sacrifice for our sins, praise for the forgiveness of our sins and our salvation, eternal spirit of God according to Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14. He sprinkled this blood in the, the mercy seat of God in heaven. That by, thereby meeting all the demands of God's righteousness to accept us into the family of God. The moment the eternal spirit of God offered, sprinkled the, 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 the most precious blood on the mercy seat of God, the enmity was abolished the curtain of the Jerusalem temple and split into two, people could see the most holy place directly. Not earlier, before that, the curtain was preventing. Nobody could enter except the high priest. And now people could see the most holy place directly. When the, when the, when the eternal spirit of God sprinkled the blood of Christ on the mercy seat of God in heaven, the enmity is gone. Reconciliation happened. Now the point is not that here. The point is, the Bible says, you have come to the mediator of the new covenant and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Sprinkled blood. Where it is sprinkled? On the mercy seat of God in heaven. And the blood is speaking to God the Father day and night. What kind of language it is speaking? It is it's the same language as Abel's blood? No, Abel's blood was demanding judgment against his own brother Cain. But this innocent blood that is sprinkled under the mercy seat of God by the eternal spirit of God is speaking the things that are favorable to you and I. A mercy, it is speaking the, the words of mercy. It is speaking, Father, have mercy on my children. They are weak. They accepted me as their Lord and Savior. Since they accepted me, they accepted you, the who, who sent me to into the world. So the Jesus blood, which is sprinkled on the mercy seat of God in heaven, and the life in the blood of Jesus Christ is speaking to the Trinity or the Father day and night to ask him favor and mercy for everyone who is worshipping Jesus Christ in spirit and truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we can see, my dear brother and sister, that the, the start, the source of mercy is flowing from the throne of grace, throne of the Almighty God, the throne of the Lamb of God from heaven. And it is displayed powerfully on the cross of Calvary when the innocent one was crucified and the innocent one is standing as a mediator between the erring and the sinful generation and the holy God and he was standing as a mediator pleading and asking and asking the mercy of God to be upon his children who are worshipping him in spirit and truth. Instead of punishment, here is a forgiveness. Instead of condemnation, here is a salvation. Instead of the, 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 the
torture and condemnation in the hell. Here is an eternal life and a mansion in heaven. This is called the mercy, my dear brother and sister. We don't deserve this favor, but somebody who died on the cross of Calvary, out of his love, out of his decision, out of the manifestation of his mercy, he has done everything for us on the cross of Calvary and is revealing as a covenant, revealing as a promise, revealing through the Holy Spirit, revealing through the sacraments of the church today. This is called the mercy of God. Hallelujah. Let's all lift our hands and praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Also, a part of the warfare, mind attacking, spirits are reason, one of the reasons for this uh, heaviness and pressure in the head. This is touching three people here, and the Lord is delivering and healing three of you. Could you tell, raise your please raise your hand. Three of you have received the comfort in the head, the, head, the heaviness, or the headache, or the pressure in the head is now gone. Who are the three? Can you raise your hand? This is touching three. Please raise your hand. Don't be. One, two, who is the third one? Yeah, three. Good time to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a brother here. Your eyes are having the pressure. The, I, unless, the, you don't know the eyes are, you experience the pressure with the eye. So, as a result, a lot of discomfort and some kind of pain is also experiencing. Jesus is touching your eyes now, and the Lord is healing you from the eye pressure and the discomfort of the eyes. Who is that brother? Can you raise your hand? The one brother, the Lord is touching you, healing you from the, the things related to your eye. You feel like that there's a pressure in the eye. Also something is uh, uh, compressing your eye. Anybody here? Well, the Lord touched the eyes of a brother and this is the healing touch of the Lord. Any sister here with the same thing? Okay. You to talk to the Lord God Almighty. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. There are two persons. Your, your, both the knee caps are, joints are always giving you the pain. And it is quite, when you climb the steps and all, there's a bit more. Jesus is touching one sister and one brother. Lord is touching your joints, leg joints, and this is the comforting and healing touch of the Lord. Who are the two? Can you raise your hand? Give back to the Lord God Almighty. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise you, Father. Thank you, the name of Jesus. There is one person here, you have the pricking pain in the stomach. As the needle prick or pencil prick, prick like that, the pain you used to experience in the stomach. This is a kind of an attack on your health and there is a spiritual reason there. Jesus is protecting you, covering you with his most precious blood. Never again you get this kind of uh, pricking pain on your Who is that? Can you raise your hand? With who is raise your hand? Pricking pain on the stomach or maybe in the head also. Or the hand also, or under the foot also. Uh, these are the prominent areas the enemy attacks. This is healing you. Do clap to the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Praise the Father. Let's all lift up our hands and praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. You praise you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 There is one brother here, I don't know, uh, he's a Hindi speaking brother, uh, I don't know Hindi. Uh, because of some trouble at home, his mind is very much disturbed. Even he's thinking of uh, a kind of end of his life. That much his mind is troubled because of mind attacking spirits are targeting his mind, exploiting the troubled situation at home. Jesus is delivering that brother from the battle of the mind and protecting him 
And the Lord is also intervening in this family to bring peace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dear brothers and sisters, so the mercy, the mercy that I am talking is the mercy of God which is revealed at the cross of Calvary, again coming from the throne of grace, which is in heaven. Dear brothers and sisters, Nineveh repented and they are seeking the mercy of God. God responded and he changed the punishment and blessed the city. Hezekiah, King Hezekiah, repented and he prayed for the mercy of God. God blessed him, extending his lifespan, blessing his nation with peace. Dear brother and sister, whenever you see trouble, calamity, disturbance, or anything which, has, which are going beyond your capacity, whether it is joblessness, or financial issues, or family problem, or harassment in your job place, workplace, whichever way, or maybe internal conflict, Whichever way, whenever you see that you are unable to handle the situation, the things are going beyond your control. I just suggest to you, dear brothers and sisters, switch on to the mercy prayer, seeking the mercy of God. What is the qualification for that? Repentance. Humble. Never have a, a, the, the, the haughty spirit or arrogant mind and heart. Never try to justify that. I am always right. I am always good like that. This is what the Pharisee said. I am praying five times a day. I do the charity. I give the tithe things. And I pray like that. He was boasting about his spirituality. And he could never touch a heart. Lord's mercy in his life. On the other hand, the tax collector. And this man was telling, Lord have mercy on me. I am a sinner. I am a sinner. I am not doing anything good. Lord have mercy on me. And he also prayed. He never justified his stand. He never found, he never had an arrogant and a haughty heart. He had a heart of, of the, the humility, acknowledging his real status and state with the Lord. And Lord said, the tax collector's prayer, the sinner's prayer is accepted by the Lord God Almighty. He gave the Pharisee gave the tithe thing. And Pharisee prayed five times a day. Pharisee was doing charity. Pharisee knew the law, the scripture very well. Yet all these things were rejected and in the absence of only one thing. He never prayed for mercy of the Lord. He never humbled himself in the presence of God. He always treated himself as a self-qualified person. My dear brother and sister, however, word of knowledge, word of God, charism of the Holy Spirit, gifts of the Holy Spirit, fruit of the Spirit, whatever, whichever, whatever we have, we don't get, we don't become a self-qualified person to receive salvation. We never became a self-qualified person to receive the forgiveness of sins that the sins from the Lord. Because of mercy, the forgiveness of sins is given, sins are given, sins is given to us because of the mercy of God through the repentance and sacrament of reconciliation. Never acknowledge that we are self-qualified people to receive the mercy of God. We are qualified to receive the mercy of God because what Christ has accomplished on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are two things in the Bible. One was a rich man. Another one was a poor Lazarus. Both of them lived at the same time and the same locality. Rich man was blessed by the Lord. He had abundance. And he every day he had a party. And his friends accompanied. Bible never says that. Rich man was living in sin. He was celebrating with the joy and abundance of the wealth and everything. And his party every day. There was a poor Lazarus. This man was lacking food. And this last was eating the food from the, that, that fallen from the, ta the, the table, of the dining table of the rich man. And the rich man was in the hell. Poor Lazarus was in the bosom of Father Abraham. Even though it is a parable, he is speaking a very sound message. That is, what was the sin of the rich man? He failed to show mercy on the poor Lazarus. What was the merit of Lazarus? He was seeking the mercy of God for daily, daily meal, 
dear brother and sister failing to show mercy on the poor person and made him disqualified him from enter the paradise dear brother and sister the word of god is telling show mercy the mercy will be shown to you so god is merciful to us how much he has revealed shown and lavishing his mercy on you and i through the throne of grace through the cross of calvary he also expects us to show mercy on the people around us the people who are in need the people the, the people who are broken hearted the people who are discriminated the people who are abandoned dear brother and sister then the mercy of the lord will be shown more to us show mercy mercy will be shown to you the second part of the mercy will be shown to you that mercy of god will be shown to you and i this is connected my lord my brother sister for you my trespasses i say for you those who trespassed against me proportional connector show mercy mercy will be shown to you dear brother and sister in our catholic faith not only we give the tithe but also we have to give the alms a l m s alms that is a charity part of our giving if we give the tithe thing is that enough no we need to give the alms we need to do the charity we need to do the charity we bear we keep on do the charity if we do only charity is that okay no we need to support evangelization that we do through the tithe thing so dear brother and sister it should be balanced what is due to the lord we have to give to the lord or the what is due to the caesar we have to do to the caesar charity or the alms are part of our christian faith my dear brother and sister the day we stop giving charity that means the self centeredness selfishness has already infected you and i we always must keep on doing charity whether in a smaller way or a bigger way according to god has inspired us and god has given us the way to to do dear brothers the day the moment we decide not to do charity anymore that's the day that we have become a victim of self centeredness selfishness and uh, 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 that is that kind of spiritual sickness in order to prevent us from infected with spiritual sickness in a smaller way or a bigger way we must keep on doing charity hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. remember the lord is speaking the 10 shekels how about the widow who paid the 10 shekels more than the rich man who paid the bill why the tentacles she was giving to the lord or she 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 never had an attachment towards the wealth she just gave whatever she gave in fully whenever we go to church my dear brother and sister we must to do the offering to the lord and in the day you think that why should i put money in the when the ashes come and all that means you are infected with the spiritual sickness you will become very self centered you are not acknowledging what i have today is a gift of god mercy of god grace of god and that that thought is gone away from our mind we become more a self centered personality that is a problem in our life dear brothers and sisters once i went to uk our retreat was going on so the collections were during the mass time the one collection go to the priest the celebrant other will come to the prayer group other will go to the church they usually take three collections uh normal sundays so the collections are taken and uh, the priest and rabbi were there to count the money indian rupees one rupee coin well, i i could see one rupee coin there indian rupees not one rupee indian rupee card even in india also we hardly see that <laughs> yeah 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 because all upi and uh, that uh, online how do we see the coins now because everything is online transaction indian rupee coins not only one day three times i saw lot of one rupee coin 10 rupee note and put on the offer what a respect you have to the lord god almighty they are not giving to the priest or what of the prayer people it is the church must and collection what a kind of heart you have you come from a place where oh, the lord has brought you to a fertile land where the honey and milk is flowing and your children generation will be blessed there and you have visited there whatever it is 
and what is not needed in the country, we are putting in the offering box. That attitude, that attitude, God sees that. We get the pain, you know, when we see the thing, it's not the money, that attitude, it hurts us. How much more the, the Holy Spirit will be grieved when we see that thing and all. We should never have such kind of attitude when it comes to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Let's all lift up our hands and praise the name of the Lord, dear brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Pura Ravikya Ravikya Grace. Grace is unmerited favor. We don't deserve it, but God is showing a favor to us. Unmerited favor is called grace. The greatest example is salvation. How much ever you work hard, how much ever we, our ancestors, or we, our generation, try to live a holy life, still we are not worthy, we are not qualified to receive everlasting life. What is everlasting life? It is the life of the true God, the Lord God Almighty. All our lives are temporary, like animal life, fish life, or the, uh, the, the, the human life, otherwise, are temporary. It is an end. Only God, the Creator, has everlasting life, eternal life. So, God, even though how much of our good things we do, we never deserve to receive everlasting life. It cannot be earned, it cannot be purchased, it cannot be procured. It is the life of the true God. And what is grace? Even though we are not worthy, we don't deserve that thing. God in his unfailing love, mercy, grace is mercy in action. And purely by grace, he transferred his eternal life into our soul to overcome the eternal death that ended our life through sin. So whenever our life is connected with the eternal life, then the devil cannot touch our life. When I had a heart attack 20 years ago, 20 years ago, I had a massive heart attack. At, I, at that time I was, I think, 58. And almost I was dead. The medicine was not working in my body. Doctors came and told me, it, you, the medicine is not working. Pray. Nurses were telling me, the condition is very critical and serious. I told nothing will happen to me and I, don't, I won't die. Only the appointed time I will die, I strongly believe that. The reason is, the prophecies the Lord revealed about me, much of the prophecies are not fulfilled. I am willing to live for the Lord. I believe that. As long as I believe, I stand ready to stand in the gap, nobody can take my life from Christ. Secondly, most more importantly, my life is knitted and bonded with the eternal life of Christ through Eucharist, through the most precious blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So they are telling that I could see my vision. So they want to give me the sedation, the morphine and the right I don't want. I can bear the pain because I want to worship the Lord till the last breath of my life. And one thing, I could see in my vision. The lots of hundreds and thousands of demons around me and they are coming towards me and they, they are telling me Tomorrow, sunrise, you will not see the sunrise in your life. You damage your kingdom. Thousands and thousands because I do deliverance. You damage your kingdom because I proclaim the gospel of Christ to people. And you damage your kingdom and we will not leave you. And we will take you. Dear brother and sister, but they used to come shouting slogan to capture me, seize me today. I, I, the Lord showed me vision. I was the open field. My, my, my hospital bed was lying in the open field and the demons from all around 360 degrees are surrounding me to seize me. But when I say, you cannot touch me, my life is connected with eternal life of Jesus Christ of the Lord and Savior. And I put on the helmet of salvation. Amen. When I say this word, I, I could not pray because when I pray, it may trigger another heart attack because BP will go up, it can trigger another uh, attack. So I cannot exert pressure, whether mentally or physically. So with the controlled word, I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I, yeah, I, 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 then I said, I, my life is connected to the eternal life of Christ. You have no right over my life. They used to run away from that thing when I said this word. 
Again, the try to return and come back. He said, my life is connected to the eternal life of Christ. You know, right to my life. 20 years past, still I'm alive. Yes. Hallelujah. What I'm telling you, my brother and sister, when the enemy hears that, we know the truth. We are equipped with the truth. When you proclaim that our life is connected with that, bonded with that, eternal life of Jesus Christ. So the enemy which is holding the sin, the eternal death, is a result of that death. Eternal death cannot supersede the eternal life. Eternal life will supersede the eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The reason, my dear brother and sister, the grace is to transfer his eternal life into our life. That's purely by grace. We don't deserve to be in the, the mansion of the Heavenly Father. Purely by grace. We don't deserve receiving the forgiveness of sins. Purely by grace. We don't be called, don't, not worthy to be called children of God. Purely by grace. He has made us the children of God and he entered into a covenant, a legal documentation confirming that. Nobody can alter the status that we can call the Creator Abba Father and He Creator will call us my child, my daughter, my son and He made a covenant, a written document legally made possible. And we are the heirs of the Kingdom of Heaven. Dear brothers and sisters, everything from the sinner, a condemned person, from the leper to the healed person, a child of God and His mansion, everything, and eternal, a crown of eternal life, everything is given to us purely by grace. So what is grace? Unmerited favor is called grace. I am living in grace. You are living in grace. Unmerited favor has been shown to us purely by grace. So I cannot boast of my salvation. If I can boast of my salvation, I will boast what Christ has done on the cross of Calvary, what Christ has accomplished on the cross of Calvary for my salvation. So I boast of my Lord whatever he has done. I have nothing to boast about it because what I have today is purely by grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's stand up, my brother and sister. We are entering the healing service. We all have to participate with the whole heart in this healing and deliverance session. Let us expect the Holy Spirit to move mightily in our soul, spirit and mind deeply. You may have worries and sorrows, emotional disturbance and troubles. This is a time the Creator, the Savior would like to meet you. Not for the sake of meeting, but to take away your yoke and burden and to give His lighter yoke and burden to you. Today is the day of encounter with the Lord. He, he, we are going to encounter His mercy. We are going to encounter His grace and the healing that flows from the wounds of Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Let's all lift up our hands and praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah.
touching two persons. Jesus is touching two persons. They are suffering from the lower back pain. Lower back pain. Lord is touching you and healing you now. Amen. And one sister, one is a brother, one is a sister. Sister, you have the numbness on the legs because of the back pain. Jesus is touching both of you and the Lord is giving the healing now. And there is a brother here, you are young. Your mind is undergoing a lot of confusion. Sometimes anger, sometimes confusion, sometimes uh, uh, revenge feeling. You don't know what to do. You are struggling in this conflict for quite almost two weeks. I can see the Spirit of God coming upon him now. Jesus is giving the peace and the grace to forgive the people who are reason for this disturbance in their life. Receive this healing of peace. Amen. And joy in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you. The Lord is touching a sister whose the heel has a, that, that, what is, I don't know the name, that a bone growth. So when you walk, your heel is to hurt your Lord. Even the special cushion chapel, still it is hurting you. Jesus is touching the extra growth of the bone and you heal now. You see the heal in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. And the Lord is touching a person who is having the left shoulder pain. Lord is touching you and healing you now. Receive the healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody, everybody. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father.
person here, there is a person here, uh, you are unable to lift your left arm and the Lord is touching your shoulder and the arm and you are able to now lift up the name, the hand without any pain and without any stiffness or uh, thing at all. Just yourself and raise the hand. Who is that person? Back to Jesus Christ of the Lord. There is also another person. Your left leg ankle has swelling and also a lot of pain at the part, ankle part. Left leg, ankle part. Jesus is touching the left leg, ankle part. And this is the healing touch. Move the ankle. You see the pain is gone. You are the one who received the healing. Who is that person? Can you raise your hand? Left leg, ankle pain. Move the ankle and see. Now take the ankle and see. The pain is gone. You are the one. The Lord touched you and healed you. Who is that person? Can you raise your hand? Left leg, ankle. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord of my Praise the Lord.
these issues. Please be seated, brothers and sisters. What a wonderful time we had in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't it? This is only a small part of what is going to...